The issue of introduced species in Australia has been a hot topic of debate in society over the past few decades, with cane toads, feral rabbits, foxes, dingoes and feral cats causing the most concern among society. These species were originally introduced to Australia as it was believed they could improve the sustainability of resources and other species, or were introduced for hunting purposes, however are now well known for their strong genes and few natural predators. The maps of Australia show the spread of cane toads from 1935 and future predictions of their distribution, which is shown to increase over time. The distribution of foxes in 2006 and will cactus in 2014 is also shown, where introduced species are the number one cause of native animal extinctions in Australia, according to the Department of Environmental and Primary Industries. Introduced species are being trapped, shot, poisoned and burned for conservation, according to Wallach in 2014. Do you believe that dingoes can be used to control introduced species free of cost, even though dingoes themselves are an introduced species to Australia? Yes, that is correct. Introduced species are large threats to Australian native flora and fauna. Instead of spending millions of dollars trying to reduce their numbers, dingoes could be used to control these species for free. So what makes dingoes capable of controlling introduced species in Australia? They are strong apex predators capable of wiping out entire populations, however are under threat themselves today. Using dingoes to control introduced species is a cost effective, sustainable and ethical way compared to other failed methods. The issue of introduced species is far from black and white as there are many different sides that must be considered. It is not as simple as keeping or eliminating introduced species and all consequences must be considered, as native Australian animals and plants are also dependent on their existence. Booth admits that controlling feral animal populations is difficult and often pointless, as feral animals are highly mobile and able to replace those killed. As stated by Wallach's article on dingoes controlling other invasive species, there is a large sum of money being spent in an attempt to control introduced species in Australia. 10 to 20 million Australian dollars are spent annually in an attempt to control Australia's six most wanted offenders, being foxes, rabbits, cats, dingoes, goats and pigs. As shown in the figure, as the stage of invasion increases, as does the abundance of these species. The management options also get more complicated and an action must take place to protect biodiversity, meaning cost of management also increases. The final graph shows change in abundance of a species over time, where the species goes through an expansion phase, where the population slowly grows with temporary declines due to environmental factors. Australia is not the only country that suffers from the effects of introduced species. New Zealand has also undergone damage to the habitat due to some species being accidentally shipped over and others being purposely introduced to solve a problem, much like cane toads in Australia. Possums native to Australia were introduced into New Zealand for their fur, however now kill trees, which prevents native species from finding food and shelter. Rats were accidentally introduced by settlers, which kill off food for native species, as well as the species themselves. Cats were then introduced to control the rat problem, which are now preying on native species too. Issues of introduced species in both New Zealand and Australia are similar, where they seem to be preying on or harming native species, even causing extinction. A cost-effective and sustainable way for conservation must be proposed to control the negative impact that some introduced species may have on biodiversity and conservation. Sustainability of introduced species can only be achieved through continued research of their influences on the environment. The money currently spent on eradication of these species could be more efficiently put towards research, observing their adaptations and gathering information on how to reduce their impact on native species conservation.
This would be of best interest when considering the three principles of ecologically sustainable development, being people, place and profit.